You know, I was just uh, listening backstage and I heard Craig say, uh, we knew that Kubernetes and this technology and this movement uh, would be bigger than Google, so we approached the Linux Foundation. I thought, pinch me, I'm dreaming. Like, that's, uh, that's a great uh, thing to hear. Um, I realize that I'm here at OSCON, so I'm just going to assume uh, by show of applause here that most of you uh, understand that open source is a better, faster way to produce software here. How many people believe that? <laughs> Not to call anybody, any proprietary people here, just stand up. All right. Uh, I think that the world, it's nice to be on the right side of history here. And we're seeing this wholesale movement towards open source. I don't need to convince all of you that that's important. What I wanna talk about is why an organization like this is important and why we're seeing more and more organizations like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation emerging. You know, uh, just a few weeks ago at DockerCon, we announced the Open Container Initiative, which is defining a standard for containers and runtime that really does create the kind of portability that containers really provide and shifts us from that server-centric view of the world to the application-centric view of the world that the previous speakers have described so well. So why do you need another organization like this? And the reason at the highest level is because as we move from one computing paradigm in the data center to a new one, which is happening for all the compelling reasons we already talked about today. There is just simply too much software to be written for any single person, any single entity, I would argue any single project to do on their own. In other words, we're really entering into a complex interplay, a new sophistication of open source development where Industry is backing an organic innovation pro a process that happens at the start with key developers, spans multiple projects, and really changes the entire industry. And that is really what is driving the movement that we're seeing and the creation of projects and, and foundations like this. So one question I get all the time is, all right, we're convinced of that. We need a place to do this work. We need a forum to get it done. But those companies, there's gotta be something in it for them. What's the catch? What's the nefarious reason that, you know, some of the largest technology companies in the world are getting together to do this? Well, the reason is because what started in many ways here at OSCON and through the open source movement uh, a long time ago has now been bought into by pretty much the entire world and industry in particular. As almost every company on earth becomes a technology company, as auto manufacturers need to have compute technology and cloud-based services in a car, or manufacturers need to do smart supply chain that's powered by cloud technology, everyone's becoming a technology company and they wanna leverage open source. And they know that they need to use more open source software to shed commodity research and development to get it out in the open because they just can't get all of this done themselves. So what benefit does it give to them to do this? And here is the key secret. What that allows all of these organizations to do is to fearlessly focus on where they can innovate above this. It focuses on how they can be a better service provider, a better provider of equipment or software on top of that equipment. And that's where you see all of the organizations participating in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation moving. They are fearless of working collectively on the things that they need to enable the underlying part of their business and fearless of innovating at ever higher levels above that. You know, it really is Google infrastructure for everybody else, Twitter infrastructure for everybody else, that really is in their business interest to do this kind of work. So now I wanna get into the details about what really enables this and why you need a foundation like this to really make this kind of innovation happen. Again, all of you understand open source, 
But let's get into a little more nuanced view of what it means to set this up and why it's important for you as a developer, as a vendor, as a, a, anyone participating in this ecosystem understand why these entities are important. They're important because when you invest in a new computing paradigm, when you embrace things like Kubernetes or Mesos or container technology or any of this technology, whether you're a company or a developer, you're making an implicit futures contract with that technology. Is that technology going to be around five years from now? Am I going to have to pay a tax for that technology two years from now? Is that going to be something that provides me with a job five to ten years from now? Is that something that's going to be supported 15 years from now when I'm still needing to manage this technology on behalf of my customer? What setting up a neutral entity like this does is answers those questions by providing a neutral home for the assets that are important to any open source project and in particular to cloud native computing. What you need is a neutral home for the IP assets that matter in open source projects whether it's trademarks, whether it's copyright, whether it's contribution agreements, whether it's things around patent regimes, all of these things need to be held in a neutral entity, collectively supported, so nobody can have an edge over anybody else. This is why you're seeing so many of these efforts being started, and this is why the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has started in order to provide that assurance to all of you as developers or participants from the industry. Now, you also need a development process that creates a level playing field that leverages the organic innovation we see in open source that is so powerful, but supercharges it with large-scale industry investment. You know, uh, at the Linux Foundation, we've witnessed this for over a decade. Today, 90% of the people who work on the Linux kernel are professional developers who work for many organizations who depend on the Linux kernel for almost every aspect of technology and computing in society, right? You've really seen that this, this uh, investment by industry really supercharges what basically started out as an organic project that, you know, took many years to build up. Now we're seeing that supercharged here by starting to define a development process from the get-go. The Cloud Native Computing Foundation is setting this structure up in a balanced way that makes this project developer-led and industry-backed and doesn't necessarily intertwine the two. In other words, code is going to talk instead of money, but money is going to enable the kind of ecosystem enablement and all of the things that you want to see to get more developers to the party, which begets more innovation, right? You also need simple things like infrastructure, whether it's Git repositories, whether it's security, you know, for the continuous integration, test, build systems, and so forth. All of these things need to be collectively underwritten and supported. We've seen projects where this doesn't happen that can cause a lot of pain. OpenSSL is a great example. So now what you're seeing is organizations and entities being formed like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation who are getting it right from the start, setting up infrastructure that is robust, stable, and managed. Finally, I think one of the things that's interesting about this new generation of open source efforts is something that I think would have been contradictory maybe 10 years ago. You know, I, as Linus Torvald's boss, he doesn't listen to me, uh, the, I talk to open source developers all the time. And you know, it used to be open source was sort of this anti-marketing movement, right? Like, I don't want to listen to those guys, they're a bunch of pointy-haired, you know, uh, jerks in marketing. And what ha we have found out over time is that marketing actually matters in open source. It matters in a different way. It matters because the more developers you bring, bring to the party, whether it's through events like this, whether it's through hackathons, whether it's through outreach efforts, the more innovation you see, the better the code becomes. It's this really important aspect of these projects. And projects that don't do that well tend to sort of fade away, and projects that do that very well tend to become very robust, very innovative, right? So these are all of the things that really matter in setting up a foundation like this. 
And at the Linux Foundation, we've worked with the uh, parties here at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation to really set up a structure that will work today, tomorrow, and decades to come. Because what we really believe in is a set of principles at the Linux Foundation. Code should be developed in the open, under an open source license, with transparent governance. It should be developer-led. It helps to be industry-backed. And it needs to be at a neutral home so that people can invest in it and have faith that it will be around for the long run, no matter who you are or who you work for. That is the right ingredients for success. And we are very proud at the Linux Foundation to be a part of it. And so that's our small part. I want to introduce next Angel Diaz from IBM, who it works for a company that is fearless about innovating at ever higher levels. They were the original supporters of Linux in many ways. They continue to innovate and uh, base a lot of their stuff on open source. So welcome, Angel, and we'd love to hear your perspective. Did you say fearless? Fearless. Fearless. Thank fearless. You. Thank you. 